This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. This episode of SketchUp a 3D Toolbox is brought to you by 3D Connection, makers of the brand new Space Mouse Wireless. To learn more about the best way to navigate in SketchUp, visit www.3dconnection.com. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and this is episode 60. We've done 60 of these things now. Hard to believe. And we have done, we've covered so much in the last 60 episodes, and we're going to continue covering some really cool stuff in this episode. Uh, Something I'm very excited about, photo match modeling. Now, photo match modeling is a way of taking a photo and creating a model out of it, even if you only know one measurement. So you don't have to go measuring all the little details, you can use the photo as a guide. So let's just dive right into it. Uh, Now here we have our apartment project we've been working on for the last few episodes. As we left it in episode 59, coffee table that we worked very hard on is still sitting there nice and proud. I'm actually going to go ahead and group it real quick just to make sure it doesn't stick to anything. Now. The next step is to obviously keep modeling the furniture. And today we're going to be modeling one piece of furniture in particular, this uh, sort of cabinet shelf unit uh, with all these little cubbies in it. It's a very nice piece, and it's very nice for photo match modeling because it's very angular and it's very simple, something good to kind of cut our teeth on. Uh, And you'll see why it needs to be angular in just a second. So this is actually the photo we're going to be basing our model off of. And if you're taking a photo of of something, be it a building or a piece of furniture, for a photo match project, there are a couple things to keep in mind. Most importantly is keep, try and get the whole object in the frame if you can. That's pretty crucial. And also try and do it not just from like a head on. Try and do it from the side a little bit at an angle. So in this case, uh, this is a great photo because we can see both the front and the side of it simultaneously. So you want to be at sort of a 45 degree angle or as, as close as you can be. Uh, now. Let's go ahead and dive right into our apartment project and start modeling this bad boy. So the first thing we need to do is actually uh, we're going to select our entire model by just selecting everything uh, with command A. And I'm actually going to go up to view and I'm going to turn off section cuts so that we see the whole thing. We had that cut in place for our coffee table last time. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose hide. And that gets rid of everything doesn't get rid of this for some reason. I'm going to go ahead and just hide this real quick too. Okay, so now it looks like everything is blank. If I go up to view and I say hidden geometry, you can see it's still there. And I'll still be able to select it and bring it back uh, very shortly. But for now, we want to keep it hidden. And that's because uh, photo match modeling, I find, works much better if you start it in what is at least appears to be a fresh project. Nothing else in the way. Uh, it's just a lot easier that way. Uh, now to start photo match modeling, very, very simple. Just go up to camera in the menu bar and choose match new photo. Now I've got a lot of stuff on my desktop. I'm just going to choose this file called photo match shelves and hit open. It takes a second for it to chew through it. And there we go. So now you can see it's opened it, but unlike using it as an object or a texture, which we've done with photos before, it's given us this really weird 3D grid layout thing. It's a bit weird to look at the first time. It can seem a bit overwhelming, but trust me, it's actually very simple once you know what you're looking at. So you see we have two sets of lines here. We have two green lines and two red lines. Those are our horizontal axis. There's a blue line too, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, So this is just like when we lock something to the green or red axis to move it in a straight line in SketchUp, but this time we get to have a little bit more control over setting the axis because we're actually setting the perspective. We want to basically match the perspective of our model to the perspective of the photograph. It's very simple to do that. All we have to do is let's start with the red line here. Grab uh, one of the endpoints. You can grab it by the center point, but that doesn't do anything really. It just moves the line. It doesn't change the perspective. And you want to line up the top red line with the top, let's say the red line is this depth part of the cabinet, and then the green lines are going across the front here, right? So we want to line this red line up with this line right here. And we just adjust our endpoints a little bit at a time until it's, it's, it's hugging that line pretty darn 
closely. We'll do the same thing for our bottom red line. You can see when I change this red line, it's changing the perspective of this kind of transparent 3D grid pretty dramatically. And it's going to look weird. It's going to look really weird until we actually get this right, which won't be until the very end. So just be patient with it. Line that up there. Very nice. Do the same with our green. Now the green is actually going to be a little bit easier because we have a longer line to follow. The longer the line you can base this off of, the more accurate it's going to be. Just line that up there and do the same with our top green. And you can see once we get this last green line into position, our grid is going to look pretty darn good when you compare it to the perspective of the photograph. You can see <clears throat> this is looking really, really nice. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to take this gold square right here where these solid blue, red, and green lines are coming in. And you can see our blue axis is lining up beautifully with the side of our cabinet. It's a very good sign. We're going to grab this yellow square and we're just going to put it right down here and kind of line it up with the bottom corner. This is going to be basically the origin point of our model. Our, all of our lines are going to be based off of this point. So it's good to pick a corner. There we go. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to tell SketchUp how big uh, this thing is in relation to everything else. This could be a skyscraper or it could be a milk carton for all SketchUp knows. And the way we tell how big it is is by this uh, sort of red and green grid back here. So over here, when you match a photo, you get this pane with a couple different settings, mostly just visual settings. You can change the style of the grid that you're working with like this, and you can change the colors of the planes and all that. Pretty handy stuff. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing this spacing value right here. Now, right now it's set to five feet, which means every one of these little squares here is a five foot square which means that this cabinet here is about, well, it's five feet, a little under five feet long. That's not correct at all. This thing is actually 31 inches wide if you measure it across like this. That's the only measurement that I know about this. You only need to know one. It doesn't have to be this length. could be the depth. could be the height. could be anything. But I'm going to go ahead and set this up here to 31 inches. And when I do that, you can see the grid changes. So what we have right here is uh, something that's twice as big as it should be. One of these squares should fill this whole, uh, this whole unit right here. Now the way we adjust the scale of it is actually by grabbing onto the blue axis and we can drag up and down. You can see when we do that, the grid gets either really, really small like this, this thing's huge now, or we can scale it up nice and big. Just line up the first grid, in this case it's this first like little red line right here, we're just going to line that up with the very edge of our unit right there. Now this isn't going to be an exact science, you might be off by maybe a sixteenth of an inch, that's fine. You can only get so close, especially if you only have one measurement. So that's looking very very good. Now all we have to do is hit the done button on the match photo pane, and when we do that, Everything goes away, and we're left with what seems to be normal SketchUp with a photo in the background. I'm going to go ahead and close this match photo panel real quick. Now, here's the trick. If I use the, uh, any of my navigation tools, or in this case, my Space Navigator, and I move from my current position even just a little bit, the photo disappears. Now, you'll also notice that up in the top, we have this new thing called Photo Match Shelves. This is a scene that SketchUp has automatically generated. You might remember that scenes are essentially preset camera positions. Now, this is automatically generated by SketchUp when we imported our match photo shelves image, and it's called match photo match shelves, excuse me, because that's what the image was called. If it was called D3894, this would be called D3894. To get back to what that photo looked like, I just click on this, the camera returns to the exact same position it was before and the photo reappears. And you can see it even tells us up in the top left, it says match photo right here. Basically, if I move from this position at all, the photo disappears because it's not lined up with my model anymore. So just something to keep in mind when you're photo matching, you don't navigate at all. So the next step is really just to start modeling. Now this is where it starts to get kind of mind blowing. You might be wondering like, well, why did we do all this work? What, what does this gain me? Well, I'll show you what it gains you. If I switch to the rectangle tool and I start drawing a rectangle starting from my origin right here, you can see that I can actually draw a rectangle that will snap to the front 
of this thing or the side or whatever, right? I could even go like down to the very bottom and just line up just based on just eyeballing it. I can line up my rectangle with the photo, line it up with the baseboards a little bit, line it up with the edge and click once. And then I can take this and I can push pull it up and you can see it lines up. I can line it up with the very top of this immediately. So look at what a big difference that made. That's that's kind of huge. So there's a lot of uh, little finute little details and tips and tricks I can show you guys about how to model in this mode. But before we do that, I do want to thank the people who make this show possible. 3D Connection. Now, I've been a fan of these guys for a long time, and I've been using a space navigator for a long time. But this is the biggest thing that I've seen them do to their hardware since I first got my space navigator. They've cut the cord. That's right, they have a brand new product, the Space Mouse Wireless. It's everything you love about the Space Navigator, but completely wireless. I've been using the Space Mouse Wireless myself for a while now, and I've got to tell you, it is absolutely stunning. Completely battery powered. All you have to do is flip the switch, and then it pairs with a little USB dongle that plugs into your computer, and you're up and running. Charging it up couldn't be easier. You just plug in a standard USB cable, and you're charging up, and this thing will last forever. I've had mine plugged in for weeks at a time and it has not even come close to dying on me, which is pretty amazing considering what it does. And it's not just the hardware that's been changed, no, no, no. The software has also undergone a massive change and it's given us a brand new feature called radial menus. By pressing one of the two buttons on either side of the space mouse itself, you can bring up this. This is a radial menu that you can completely customize yourself with any four options you want. In this case, I've got mine bound to the line tool on the top, the rectangle tool on the right, push-pull tool on the bottom, and the measure tool on the left. And then I just click in the middle to get rid of it. So if I want to switch my uh, tools, normally I would take my hand off my space mouse to get to the keyboard shortcuts. Not so anymore. I can just go line tool. Want to draw a line. Boom. There we go. Draw another line here, go back down. I have a face, I want to push pull it, go like this. Very, very quick, very, very easy, and completely customizable, not just for SketchUp, but for other applications too. You can use this in Photoshop, you can use this to control your iTunes library if you want, it's fantastic. But seriously, the wireless is one of the best things that I have seen happen to anything on my desk in a very long time. And I'm so glad that I can finally share this with you guys the brand new Space Mouse Wireless is here. Now, if you want to take a look at the hardware for yourself, which I would highly recommend doing, just go to their website at 3dconnection.com and check it out for yourself. And I want to thank 3D Connection so much for sponsoring this episode of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to undo that and go back down to nothing for a second. And I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to trace um, just the front part of this, of this uh, unit real quick. You can see it doesn't line up perfectly, and that's just because my um, uh, my axes weren't lined up perfectly when I originally did it. It's very difficult to do that, and it takes a lot of finesse to do that, but it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. So there we go. That's my sort of front guideline there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this center face. I still have the lines around it, and I'm going to switch to, using my radial menu, I'm going to switch to my measure tool, and I'm going to add some guidelines here. And I can still use the uh, arrow keys to snap it to a specific point like this. So I'm going to just basically mark the guides of where these little cubby things are. right? So that's going to make my life a whole lot easier very soon. Now even though I can't move, I can still use the zoom tool and zoom in. So I, I just can't change my perspective, but I can zoom in and if I switch the hand tool I can still pan around. Uh, Space Navigator probably isn't going to be as helpful here just because it's very easy with the Space Navigator to actually accidentally uh, change your perspective just a little bit. So you, we got to kind of go a little bit robotic here for a second. Just going to add a couple more guidelines. You can you can kind of see the lines that I'm that I'm going for here. Switch the hand tool again and just add a couple more like this. Again, I'm just eyeballing all these. I don't need to take any measurements because I'm going off of a completely accurate photo. So that makes a big, big difference. There we go. Now I'm just going to add a couple more for the sides. 
And there we go. So that should be it. Yes, good. Now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Excellent. And I'm going to retrace one of my original lines to get that face back. And you can see now I've got sort of an outline of where those cubby holes are supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is use the push-pull tool and push this back until it lines up with the photo. Then I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm going to basically trace out those little cubby holes that I just made all those guidelines for. Easier to do it this way because one one thing with photo match is that even with photo match, once you uh, model something on top of it, you can't you 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 can't see the photo anymore, which is a bit of a problem. So nice to do guidelines on the photo for something like this. There we go. Then push pull one of these faces back. Double click on the rest of them, punch out the holes, and voila, there we have it. So now if I rotate around this, you can see I've got a perfect representation of that bookcase and I never had to measure anything in real life, which is really, really nice. Now, one other thing I can do with PhotoMatch that sometimes is nice and sometimes is not very nice, I'm just going to pull up the, uh, uh, the PhotoMatch tool again. So you can see here, there's one button we haven't actually tried pressing yet, and that is Project Textures from Photo. I'm going to show you what that does real quick. I'm going to click the button. Trim partially visible faces, yes. And there we go. So you can see, it, it almost looks like it went invisible, but actually, if I move, you can see, no, it's not invisible. It's just textured, this whole model, based off of the image. It essentially projects... Uh, if you imagine a, a film projector projecting a picture onto a blank piece of furniture, that's what this is doing. Now, at first, you might be like, oh, my God, this is, this is amazing. This looks great. Well, here's, here's the one downside to it. Yeah, it only really looks good from that one angle. And uh, sides you can't see at all are not textured, like this side here. Those don't get any texture. And even the ones that are partially visible, that whole trim partially visible faces, yeah, it does stuff like this. So you can see it actually split this into two separate uh, faces. Now if I go back over here, it's very weird. It's like an optical illusion. Suddenly it looks amazing again. But the moment I move it, it's very weird looking. So uh, I'm going to undo that. Stick with white, and uh, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my paint bucket tool. Pick uh, not black, but a dark gray color. Maybe a little bit lighter than that. There we go. And just texture this thing myself by hand. It's just easier to do it this way. You get much better results. Now you could, if you wanted to, uh, do the photo match texture thing and then maybe just try copying and pasting the textures to kind of fill in the gaps, replace bits and pieces of it with your own. Um, and sometimes this could work great, but most of the time, because your photo can't uh, have a view of every face at once, you're going to wind up texturing it by hand anyway. I'm just going to add a couple more splotches of paint on here. There we go. And then I'm just going to delete my guides. Excellent. Close my excess windows. And there we have it. Now I'm ready to bring back the rest of my model. I'm going to go ahead and select this guy and group him while I can. And then I'm going to go up to View, Hidden Geometry. And I'm going to select everything in here, and I'm going to unhide it. There we go. Now, it's possible that after you do this, you might notice something uh, a bit odd uh, about your model. It might look a bit off, and that's probably because when you do photo match, it tends to tweak the field of view in your project, which is basically how wide of an angle uh, is your camera set to. So if I hit Z for the zoom tool, this is where you change your field of view. Uh, you can see down here, if my field of view is set to 56.92 uh, degrees, bit of an odd number. This could even be higher. Once I had something that, uh, a model where it, it went up to 90, which looked really, really weird. It looked something like this. Very, very weird. Very Funhouse Mirror-esque. And the way you change this is by holding down the Shift key and clicking and dragging in and out, and you can see that number change. Typically, I like something around 40 to 45, somewhere around here. Uh, anywhere in there, and the human eye doesn't really notice much of a difference. 
So now you can see I've got this guy uh, kind of stuck in a wall. That's because that's where my origin was. I'm going to actually switch to the move tool and rotate him like this. Grab him by the corner down here and move him into position. And you can see it fits beautifully. It looks exactly the right size because it is exactly the right size, even though we never actually had to take a tape measure out and measure every little tiny detail. This is all done by hand, by eye, with Photomatch. So that's it for this episode of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. Uh, I'm going to continue on modeling furniture, and I would highly recommend you guys do the same. Use a combination of techniques. Use the technique, uh, the old-fashioned technique that we used for the coffee table. Photomatch wouldn't work that well for this guy, just because there are so many little details. You could do it. You might be able to. In fact, I would recommend trying it if you can, but something really complicated like that, I prefer to model it by hand. Uh, but something like this guy, you don't know the details, but you know enough and you have a good photo, use Photomatch and do that for the rest of this stuff. There's a media center here that's the same style as that cabinet you could do. Uh, couches might not work as much because they have soft edges. No hard edge that's very angular that you can latch onto for the perspective. But give it a shot. Always give it a shot and see what works best. I'll see you in the next one, guys, where we're going to be rearranging all the furniture in this room to finish off our remodel. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.